The Good Clinical Practice GCP guideline, is an international ethical and scientific quality standard for designing, conducting, recording, and reporting trials that involve the participation of human subjects. Special attention of GCP is focused on the rights, safety and well-being of trial subjects, and the credible and accurate data obtained during clinical trial. Also, a good clinical practice, GCP guideline, gives a detailed description of roles and responsibilities of all the parties included in the clinical trial process such as sponsors, investigators, ethics committees, regulatory authorities, and research subjects. Thirteen principles of good clinical practice are applicable for all of them. Although the principles of GCP are self-explanatory, in this video we shall try to provide more clarifications and historic sources for every point. First principle of GCP is related to ethical conduct of clinical trial. Clinical trials should be conducted in accordance with the ethical principles that have their origin in the Declaration of Helsinki, and that are consistent with GCP and the applicable regulatory requirements. Declaration of Helsinki was developed by World Medical Association WMA, as a set of ethical principles developed mostly for the physicians and medical workers. The first version was adopted in 1964. The Declaration of Helsinki played important role in development of GCP. By the time of the GCP creation, Declaration of Helsinki was revised four times. With every revision, the Declaration grew in its content. On the other hand, GCP provides the principles and rules for all stakeholders involved in clinical research process. GCP can be considered as an extended Declaration of Helsinki, which elaborates Declaration principles and conclusions in more detail. Second principle of GCP is, Trial Risk versus Trial Benefit Assessment. Before a trial is initiated, foreseeable risks and inconveniences should be weighed against the anticipated benefit for the individual trial subject and society. A trial should be initiated and continued only if the anticipated benefits justify the risks. Second principle has its root in the Nuremberg Code. It is also one of the points stated in first version of Declaration of Helsinki. However, most effort to explain terms risk and benefit, and correlation between these two terms was recorded in Belmont Report. According to Belmont Report, the term risk refers to a possibility that harm may occur, while the term benefit is used in the research context, to refer to something of positive value, related to health or welfare. Unlike risk, benefit is not a term that expresses probabilities. Accordingly, so-called risk-benefit assessments are concerned with the probabilities and magnitudes of possible harm and anticipated benefits. Beneficence thus requires that we protect against risk of harm to subjects and also that we be concerned about the loss of the substantial benefits that might be gained from research. Third principle of GCP is a trial subject protection. The rights, safety, and well-being of the trial subjects are the most important considerations and should prevail over interests of science and society. This principle is common for all ethical guidelines issued before GCP. This principle has its own specific importance, and it is self-explanatory. Also, it can be considered as a core principle of GCP. Fourth principle of GCP is an information on the medicinal product. The available non-clinical and clinical information on an investigational product should be adequate to support the proposed clinical trial. The Nuremberg Code states that trial, should be so designed and based on the results of animal experimentation and a knowledge of the natural history of the disease. Also. First point of Declaration of Helsinki states that medical research should be based on laboratory and animal experiments or other, scientific established facts. This means, that test medicine should undergo through careful laboratory and animal testing before it could be tested in people. Fifth principle of GCP, a detailed protocol. Clinical trials should be scientifically sound, and described in a clear, detailed protocol. The requirement of detailed protocol, or experimental protocol is mentioned for the first time in a second revision of Declaration of Helsinki from October 1975. Protocol should give a detailed information about planned procedures for the conduct of the trial. GCP gives clear instructions about content, and creation process of study protocol. This principle is directly linked with the principle that follows. Sixth principle of GCP is a compliance with the study protocol. A trial should be conducted in compliance with the protocol that has received prior Institutional Review Board IRB, Independent Ethics Committee IEC, approval or favorable opinion. In the same sentence where Declaration of Helsinki mentions a protocol, a requirement for Ethics Committee is also mentioned. 
experimental protocol which should be transmitted to a specially appointed independent committee for consideration, comment and guidance. This sentence marked the beginning of what is known today as an Institutional Review Board IRB, in the United States, or Ethics Committee EC, in European countries. This is a committee that reviews proposed methods for research to ensure that they are ethical. Such committees are formally designated to approve, or reject, monitor, and review medical research involving human subjects. Seventh principle of GCP is a medical decision. The medical care given to, and medical decisions made on behalf of subjects, should always be the responsibility of a qualified physician or, when appropriate, of a qualified dentist. The seventh and eighth principles are connected. The origin of this principle can be found in the Nuremberg Code. During the doctor's trial in Nuremberg in 1946, it has been proven that experiments were performed by unqualified persons, were conducted at random for no adequate scientific reason. From Nuremberg Code onwards, this ethical standard has been included in all ethics standards. The requirement of qualified physician, or scientifically qualified persons as it is written in Nuremberg Code and Declaration of Helsinki, is directly related to patient safety. All ethical standards, are created to protect rights, safety, and well-being of the trial subjects in medical research, supervision of qualified physician is essential for highest level of medical care. Eighth principle of GCP, a qualified trial staff. Each individual involved in conducting a trial should be qualified by education, training, and experience to perform his or her respective tasks. With this principle, GCP expands requirement of previous point to all individuals involved in conducting a trial, not just a physician. Also, other significant point of this principle is introduction of requirement for training of all persons involved in clinical trial process. Ninth principle of GCP is the informed consent. Freely given informed consent should be obtained from every subject prior to clinical trial participation. Voluntarily consents predates the Nuremberg Code. It was a hot topic in period when clinical trials as we know today began to develop. However, necessity of voluntary consent was introduced in Nuremberg Code, moreover, beside just voluntary consent, Nuremberg Code demands that before the acceptance of an affirmative decision by the experimental subject, there should be made known to him the nature, duration, and purpose of the experiment, the method and means by which it is to be conducted, all inconveniences, and hazards reasonably to be expected, and the effects upon his health, or person which may possibly come from his participation in the experiment. First version of Declaration of Helsinki from 1964, used the term freely given consent which was replaced by the term informed consent in second revision from October 1975. Belmont report gives a detailed description of the informed consent, elevating it to the level of the process in which investigators should give all necessary information, about trial to the study subject, in a clear and understandable manner. The informed consent, and instructions about informed consent process given in GCP, will be a topic of separate video. Tenth principle of GCP is an accurate reporting. All clinical trial information should be recorded, handled, and stored in a way that allows its accurate reporting, interpretation and verification. R2 Addendum Text This principle applies to all records referenced in this guideline, irrespective of the type of media used. The GCP was not designed to be just another ethical standard. Beside protection of safety and well-being of trial subject, GCP also represents a quality standard. This principle, and others that follow, are the departure from strictly ethical topics, and mark the introduction of the quality principles. Inclusion of this principle in GCP, and detail instructions on how manage records and reports, states the importance of data quality, as integral part of clinical trial process. The eleventh principle of GCP is confidentiality. The confidentiality of records that could identify subjects should be protected respecting the privacy and confidentiality rules in accordance with the applicable regulatory requirements. The purpose for implementation of confidentiality of records, and prevention of disclosure proprietary information of subjects' identity, is just additional step to increase the level of protection of rights, safety, and well-being of the trial subjects. Twelfth principle of GCP is introduction of a good manufacturing practice. Investigational products should be manufactured, handled, and stored in accordance with applicable good manufacturing practice GMP. They should be used in accordance with the approved protocol. Introduction of good manufacturing practice as GCP principle, was additional step to implement quality control mechanisms in manufacturing process of the test medicine. 
GMP was introduced to harmonize the manufacturing process of active pharmaceutical ingredients. It also covers the production and labeling requirements of investigational products for use in clinical trials. Thirteenth principle of GCP is introduction of quality assurance in clinical trial process. Systems with procedures that assure the quality of every aspect of the trial should be implemented. R2 Addendum Text Aspects of the trial that are essential to ensure human subject protection and reliability of trial results should be the focus of such systems. By the introduction of this principle, the protection of rights, safety, and well-being, of the trial subjects and quality of data do not rely on investigator only. The initiator of clinical trial, the sponsor, is also responsible for constant oversight of clinical trial process, by implementing quality management mechanisms such as monitoring, standard operating procedures, SOP, and audits. Beside the investigators and sponsor, the regulatory body inspections, are also part of higher level quality oversight. These are the top level principles, which need to be interpreted and translated into good clinical research practice. Unlike Nuremberg Code, Declaration of Helsinki and Belmont Report, which are the ethical standards, GCP is combination of ethic and quality standard, made to be global and governing guideline for clinical trials as we know it today.